those W's, your matchup spread, as we've discussed through several of our players here today, is just so good. And we are probably going to see that in this matchup today. So here we go, both of our players laying out their prize cards. Um, we do see the canceling cologne in there for Zach Lesage. So definitely keeping in mind that Empoleon, that penguin is yep. running around here, but it Ooh. is two in the prize cards here. And Tiger has prized both copies of Gengar. Now the Gengar is a huge card for this deck, though Tiger is only playing two copies of it. There's no Haunter, there's no Ghastly, but you can put Gengar in play thanks to its Netherworld Gate ability, when if it's in your discard pile, you can put it onto your bench and place two damage counters on it. And that, of course, fuels the damage output of Hisuian Zorark V-Star's ticking curse ad attack, dealing 50 damage for each of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on them. Yeah, that's definitely true. We have not really talked about the actual build of the deck and what it's based around, but as Chip just said, you want to get those damage counters on your board state, spread them around. Of course, the Hisui and Zorark uh, being able to potentially take some big knockouts here, but not going to be as big of knockouts that you'd normally need because Reggie HP is a little bit lower than some of those VV star Pokemon that we're going to see, but it is still going to be relevant here, but it's definitely going to be a, a battle to decide where to put those damage counters for Tiger here. So starting off the match here, Radiant Halucha in the active position here for Tiger, and then we are going to see a Trekking Shoes here straight off of there, and then a Quick Ball searching out a basic Pokemon from the deck. What do you think about starting that Radiant Halucha chip? It's a great card in this deck for the meta. It's so good to let you get to a one-hit knockout on Pokemon like the Curem VMAX, like the Mew VMAX if there's an Oricorio in play. But in pretty much every other matchup, it is almost entirely useless. <laughs> it is a Pokemon you don't really want to have in play because it'll clog up your bench. It's not boosting your damage, of course, only boosting the damage done to Pokemon VMAX. So it's not the worst thing to start. It does just have the one retreat, you know, and there's plenty of ways for Tiger to get Pokemon out of the active but it's definitely not something you would actively look to put in play if you know yeah. you're playing against Regigigas. Yeah, definitely. So Tiger's searching out that Bidoof here, a card I don't believe we've seen today, actually, no. that Bibarel line yet. But as soon as that Bidoof is able to evolve into the Bibarel, that is a draw engine here for Tiger, uh, being able to draw up to five cards in hand off of it. Very strong ability off of that Bibarel, that Industrious Incisors, to allow Tiger to get the cards that they need to uh, accelerate through their deck here and really get those big knocks. So we are over here on Zach Lesage's side now. Of course, that Reggie Drago starting in the active here, that Dragon's Horde ability allowing you to draw some cards. Zach's hand is pretty good here, provided he can hit something off of this Pokestop and thin the hand down to use Dragon's Horde, because he's already got four of the Reggie Pokemon ready to go. <laughs> I was about to say, this is a kind of a tough situation for Tiger, something you definitely don't want to be staring down at if your opponent is playing Reggie, because of course, getting all of those Reggies out allows you to accelerate energy from your discard pile, which is a huge factor in this deck, and already having so many of them in hand and being able to dwindle down your hand here for that Reggie Drago's ability is huge. We are seeing the Pokesop come into play for Zach as well. So uh, being able to utilize that potentially this turn, attaching, manually attaching an energy there onto the Reggie Drago. And now we are going to see that ability activated. So as you said, Chip, just narrowing down that hand and drawing some more cards off that Dragon's Horde. Yeah, didn't really get the pieces I think he was looking for there. Zach is missing a supporter at this point in the turn and drew into a Reggie Steel, not something he really wanted. And Reggie Rock hitting the discard pile. We see a little fist bump there from Tiger. Yeah. He was happy to see that go down. And then Marnie gets discarded as well. This is a... Two cards that Zach needed. I know, a pretty poor start, honestly, so far from Zach. Yes, absolutely. And as we've talked about breaking so heavily with Reggie before, Zach, I'm sure, is sitting here hoping that is not the case here in the progression of this game because that could be sticky. And we are just going to see the pass over to Tiger now. Tiger now having some room to... Uh, do with whatever he wants, really, with this turn uh, for Tiger. So we are going to see the evolution into, we have a rainbow Hisui and Zorark V-Star here on the bench. And we are going in with an Ultra Ball, of course, to search out that Beaverell coming into play. So Tiger is going to be able to accelerate uh, some cards into the hand if 
it is dwindled down enough, which I believe it kind of is. I don't think there's many cards in hand for I Tiger at this point. I think that Tiger just ultra balled away his entire hand. So okay, I was yep. wondering. I was it's like, is it the to the side or the is there nothing? five here off of Yo. the incisors. And something that's really interesting as well is that Tiger chose to discard a professor's research. He just wants to get through the deck as quickly as possible. Use these incisors. Fill the hand up to five. Then use the Phantom Star V-Star power on the Hisuian Zoark to ditch the hand and draw seven more and then still have an opportunity to try and find a supporter card. Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely a deck that plays fast and quick for sure. And you just want to be able to overpower, but you also have to make sure you are uh, utilizing your resources appropriately and you're able to last throughout the later turns. And I think Tiger here is realizing that both copies of Gengar are in mm -hmm. the prizes because he would love to grab one off this Evolution Incense to just put it in the discard pile right away. And that is going to be certainly setting off the alarm bells in Zach's head, he is going to definitely know that there are no Gengars available to Tiger right now. Yeah, definitely. And that Gengar is so vital into spreading out those damage counters for sure. So that is definitely something to note for Tiger. Ooh. Very unfortunate. But we are going to see the boss's order here. Pretty interesting. We'll go with the Phantom Star to ditch the hand, needing to find a way to get some energies into play also get some damage into play in order to start swinging with the ticking curse um, yep. but without the gengar it's going to have to be through the gape jaw bog and we do not see that gape jaw bog here in this hand yeah of course now tiger having activated that v-star ability so it is no longer um, able to be used for the rest of the game here for tiger and uh that was the the fresh seven cards there after the ditch, of course, we do see that Oranguru hitting the bench as well. And it looks like it was just a pass now over to Zach, Very, uh, who <laughs> still just does not have much going on, huh? Yeah, I was about to say both of these uh, players, especially for decks that usually set up relatively quickly, it's going much slower here. Wow. Okay, no, we're going to see the Pokestop here I thought, he I, I thought that well, was a pass. Right? I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh my no. goodness. Wow. Pokemon and two supporter cards. No items <sighs> hit off the Pokestop for Zach Lesage. Zach, that is just unfortunate to see you when you're using that Pokestop. We have seen some very unfortunate situations with that Pokestop, and that is just how things go sometimes. So Zach having to manually attach here to that Registeel on the bench. We are going to see the scoop up net having to discard that choice belt as well, because of course with scoop up net, the cards attached do go into the discard yep. pile. So that is now hitting the discard pile just more resources in there that Zach does not want to be in the discard pile along with all those supporters and everything too. This is still fine though from Zach's end. He can attack with Reggie Gate this turn. Looks like Ordinary Rod will be played as well to shuffle a couple of Reggies back into the deck. And Reggie Gate can now search the deck for a basic Pokemon, put it onto the bench so that he can get ready to start using Ancient Wisdom, hopefully next turn, provided he's able to find a supporter, of course. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely still playing to all of the outs, getting that Regilecki uh, out with that Registeel's move here. And something else Zach has now is that brand new gift energy on this active Registeel. So I think what Zach is doing with this play is he's oh trying yeah. to set his board Sacrificing. up. And he's just got his fingers crossed. <laughs> Please, Tiger, knock out this Registeel and give yes. me a bunch of new cards to work with. Yeah, gift energy is huge. It's essentially... Um, uh, what Lucky Egg was, but in an energy card now. Right. So allowing you to draw up to the seven cards, that's going to be huge for Zach. So Sacrificial Lamb here of the Reggie Steel. Uh, but Tiger is now over on their turn here. We are going to see a Marnie. Wow, Chip. Okay, so Zach only had three cards in hand. Of course, we already knew they weren't super helpful to Zach. So this could actually be a saving grace here potentially for Zach. But Tiger may have just needed to do that Marnie there. So five cards here for Tiger. Yeah, Tiger does find the Gape Jaw Bog, but he just put a bunch of basic Pokemon onto the bottom of the deck, and it looks like we're spinning the wheel with Pokestop, and that's two oh, supporters wow. and a double turbo going down. <laughs> this Pokestop is not in either of these players' favor right now. I think uh, we might see it ditched here for a Gape Jaw Bog because that is just rough. That is exactly what we are going to see here, bumping that Pokestop that unfortunately just got rid of a lot of resources for Tiger, um, which is Sad to see. And then Zach just reading the text there. Tiger, this is another way to uh, get those damage counters out with the Gape Jaw Bog. But as you said, Chip, those Pokemon are on the bottom now of the deck. So Tiger will play the 
Use the Orangaroo's ability. Primate Wisdom does find the Trekking Shoes, so he can choose to discard the boss he just put on top and find something else. Does get into an Ultra Ball, which would be nice to grab Crobat V, theoretically, though Tiger's copy of Crobat V, the one copy he plays, in addition to the two Gengars, oh no. is sitting in the prizes. Oh, wow. That is very unfortunate. And uh, Tiger now looking through the deck here, activating that Ultra Ball, discarding the two cards and searching out a Pokemon, opting for just another Hisuian Zorark V and benching it right away. Uh, of course, that Gape Job Bog Zach helping out here, putting those damage counters onto that Hisuian Zorark V for Tiger. And Tiger can now fill the hand with Industrious Incisors, really looking for some more basic Pokemon here. Needs to have damage on three Pokemon in order to get the KO with the Ticking Curse. So does find the Bidoof, but is there a damage pump in hand to move that around? And I don't think there is. Yeah, damage pump to just shift uh, those damage counters around. Put them in uh, different spots that maybe you need them to be in or, uh, you know, accelerate your damage as well or kind of play around what your opponent is doing. But here we go. We are back on Zach's side here. Reggie Rock hitting the bench here now. So Zach uh, accelerating to having all of the Reggies out. Of course, that gift energy didn't come into play because the Reggie Steel is still alive in the active position here. So we are going to have to see what Zach chooses to do in this turn. Looks like Aurora Energy going down to the active and has a choice between Marnie and Research here in the hand. Do you want to research and lose a supporter card or do you want to reset your opponent's hand when you know they didn't really have the best turn last turn? It looks like Zach will choose the former, go with the research and draw a bunch of new cards. Yeah, definitely. Maybe just trying to pull any outs possible, any advantage that Zach can get over Tiger in this matchup is definitely going to be huge. So when you see Tiger's not doing a lot, it's definitely a strong play to go with the research. We are going to see that his Dewey and Heavy Ball come into play here. So Zach able to look at the prize cards, search out a basic uh, Pokemon that is in the prize cards and switch it with the Heavy Ball if applicable. But there are no Pokemon in there. But of course, it is still a huge advantage to know exactly what is in your prize cards. So Zach, of course, just looking at those cards, making sure that he can remember and then is going to spread out those prize cards again. And then more than anything as well, he's just playing this heavy ball, which he knows is not going to be useful at any other point in the game. There's no Pokemon prized, so just burn that heavy ball now. Get it in the discard pile. You're not going to want to draw into it later if Tiger were to disrupt you with something like a Marnie. Yeah, or a Roxanne especially, right. too. You don't want you, you don't want an unuseful card for sure. Um, okay, so Zach is still over here now with that Reggie Seal in the active position. Ooh, just a pass, though. Back over to Tiger now. Tiger definitely with a much slower start uh, than I'm sure they wanted in this match so far, but we are going to see the evolution into that. Hisui and Zorark V-Star, of course, both of the V-Star Pokemon now have double turbo energies attached to them, and then we are going to see a Marnie activated by Tiger, which means Tiger's going to be able to draw five cards, and Zack is only going to be drawing a four off of this Marnie. Tiger now with the five, still needing that damage pump in order to find the KO. And I don't see a pump in hand yet. He's got trekking shoes to try to see a couple more cards. Of course, we do have access to a couple of industrious incisors as well. Looks like trekking shoes will be the start. Can ditch the choice belt pretty freely. And damage pump was grabbed off the trekking shoes. That's excellent. Wow, that is definitely lucky indeed <laughs> to uh, ditch the card and then get the one you want. That yep. is awesome to see. So we are going to see those damage counters being spread out here. Now 10 on both of the Bibarels, which is going to allow that Hasui and Zorark to do that damage needed to take a knock. Setting up very nicely here and still has access to those incisors. A pal pad hitting the hand. That could be nice to try to disrupt Zach further later on with more Marnies. Putting those back into the deck seems pretty decent. Of course, even though Tiger played a Marnie this turn and it does look like he will be getting a knockout, Zach is going to get a lot of help from that gift energy that's on the Registeel. 
Most definitely. And I'm sure, you know, Reggie's always want to be able to take big knockouts on VMAX Pokemon, three prize Pokemon. But in this scenario, Chip, we see one prizers and two prizers here on the board for Tigers. So how do you think this is going to come into play uh, later on in this match? Really, who's going to have the advantage on the prize cards and how many are being taken? So much of it is going to come down to can Zach find the pieces to get Regirock's attack off this turn. If he yeah. can attack with Regirock this turn and take a one-hit KO on the Hisuian Zorak V-Star, that means those energies are in the discard pile, easily ready to be able to be brought back with the Ancient Wisdom later on. Gift Energy will activate here, drawing Zach three cards, gets to see them before he promotes, and then now gets to decide, what do I want to promote? And then gets to draw his card for turn. So you can just see how powerful Gift yeah. Energy is in this deck and why it really does just make so much sense alongside the Reggie Gigas. Yeah, that is a huge advantage for sure. And of course, Zach promoting that Reggie Rock there, that Hisuian Zorark V-Star with the weakness to the fighting and no protection against it either. So Zach, like you said, Chip has to find a way here to get that attack off with the Reggie Rock. And how is the hands looking for that to be able to happen? Well, he needs an Aurora energy. There's only one in the discard pile, so Ancient Wisdom can only bring three energies back, of course. And yes. Reggie Rock does need two fighting energy. So Zach is off of his supporter for turn, going to have to draw into an Aurora energy. Otherwise, he would theoretically miss an attack here. And a missed attack here from Zach would be a massive opening for Tiger. That would definitely be massive. Like you said, there has to be an attack to maintain this momentum for Zach here. So this is going to be huge. This Bruno, of course, a Pokemon was knocked out before here for Zach. That Reggie Steel did go down so we are going to see more cards here and this is this is huge this draw right here chip absolutely needs to find the aurora energy and if he whiffs it's going to be a, a pretty good spot for tiger to be in so let's see if zach is able to find it there's one in the discard pile and then of course he can easily accelerate any colorless providing energy something like that gift energy that went down of course with that ancient wisdom he's got all the reggies in play it just comes down to can he find the aurora energy here here we go <laughs> We are going to see that seven cards here for Zach. Let's see what it is. There's three in the deck, and he does not draw wow. one into hand. There is still a chance here, though. There is a Pokestop in hand and a Quick Ball, it looks like. So he can attach this Speed Lightning Energy for turn, Okay. draw a couple cards, try to find the Aurora still, and there it is. Alongside Quick Ball now, Zach would be able to ditch this card and put it in the discard pile so that he can accelerate it with Ancient Wisdom. Here we go. So Pokestop coming into play. And now we're going to see the Pokestop. What is going to hit the discard here? Of course, the Scoop Up Net and the Ultra Ball go to hand because they are item cards. And then that Speed Energy is going to hit the discard pile. I'm pretty sure I saw a Quick Ball in Zach's hand. He at least got the Ultra Ball off the Pokestop. So he'll be able to pull off the attack with Regirock here if he wants it. Or is he going with the Reggie Aleki? Going with a spreading damage route, it looks like. Doesn't want to take the two prizes here. Wants to instead try to hit with Terra Spark, deal 120 damage, and then can put 40 damage onto two benched Pokemon. Wow, yeah, that's looking like what we were about to see, actually. Choice Belt being played here, so even more damage onto that Hisuian Zorark V-Star as well from that Regilecki. So that is definitely uh, the, the route we're about to see played from Zach, but of course still playing to all of Zach's outs here with that quick ball discarding a capture energy to search for a Pokemon, but choosing to fail it here and just shuffling up the deck. Yeah, Zach, I guess wanted to hang on to the Aurora energy in hand to try to thin the hand down next turn to draw cards with the Dragon's Horde ability of the... Reggie Drago. Zach has already expended some resources here with a couple of ordinary rods, so maybe he's worried about having access to enough Regirox throughout the course of the game, so wants to try to go for a couple of two-hit KOs and then close out the game with a big one-hit knockout, probably. You said there was the Aur Aurora energy in hand? I really sure. thought so, I don't but... I think I saw it in the hand. Okay, maybe I missed it then. I think it may have uh, been... A, a different energy that we saw, okay. and that is why we're seeing the play. Oh, you're now. right, actually. Yeah, that is a good point. I, I guess the Aurora or the Speed Lightning that he drew. You were imagining it because yeah. you wanted it to happen I so bad, so. Chip. 
Yep, that is, that is a miss there. I guess Zach uh, drew the Speed Lightning instead, so couldn't quite go for the knockout with Regirock, but still just getting the damage in play with Regieleki. Very solid. He'll be able to get the two-hit knockout unless Tiger combos a Sharon's Care in order to pick <laughs> this card up, heal that damage completely, throw the Hisuian Zoark V back down into play. It does need to take the damage from the Gapejaw Bog and the Ticking Curse will be able to easily KO this active Regieleki. Yeah, seeing that Terrian's Care come into play, a card that we often see in our Arceus decks, but is applicable as well for this deck here, too, for those colorless Pokemon. So that is definitely huge here for Tiger, attaching the Choice Spell as well to the active Hisuian Zoroark. V-Star now. And it and will just be the yeah, knockout. Yeah, that's just going to be the knockout, taking another prize card for Tiger, and now it is back to Zach here, of course, activating that gift energy. So drawing those extra cards, being able to look at them and then choose who to promote off of the bench and trying to formulate a recovery strategy here, already being down two prize cards from their opponents. Yeah, Zach's hand is honestly not very good here. It's full of a bunch of Reggies and a couple of item cards that don't really help him very much. He, I think, has an Ultra Ball that he could thin the hand down a little bit with getting rid of a couple Pokemon, maybe shuffle them back, and then bank on the Dragon's Horde to kind of bail him out and find him something to work with. Yeah, just not having that Aurora energy is definitely uh, hindering Zach a lot here right now. So having to choose alternate attackers. So we are going to see that three energy being put onto the Regilecki, of course, that Gapejaw Bog coming into play for both players, yep. taking that 20 damage because it is a shared stadium between them. So Zach will... Use Ancient Wisdom, throw those energies onto Reggie Alecki. Does have the Reggie Drago in the active. There is a scoop up net already in hand, though, so that can pick up this active, and we will see a Terra Spark here, most likely. Yep, just going in with the Ultra Ball as well. A tiger looking through the discard pile now on Zach's side. There's so many resources in the Reggie decks that we see, and it's very important to track what they've already used right. and what they still have left as well. So Tiger definitely making a good move here, making sure that he's well aware of the outs that Zach still has in deck potentially. So Zach discarding a couple Reggies and then immediately putting a couple back into the deck through the Ordinary Rod. It's so interesting because Ordinary Rod has two great effects, getting two Pokemon back and two basic energy cards, but you only get to use one of them <laughs> in this deck. Of course, not playing yeah. any copies of basic energy, just able to put a couple Pokemon back, which is exactly what the Reggie Gigas deck needs for some recovery options. All right, so here we go. Zach going to be using that Terra Spark for that 120 damage and the 40 damage on two of Tiger's bench Pokemon, which actually is applicable in this matchup, oh, of yeah. course, because so many damage counters are already on the board safe for Tiger. So that is definitely huge. And now we are back over on Tiger's side. Of course, Zach still has not taken a prize card just yet, but Tiger does have the ability, as we saw um, before, with that Charon's Care in deck. Yeah, has already played one, does have two copies of it. So if he can find that second copy here and pick this active up, that would be really nice. A yeah, good it's way to get this out of here and try to deny that extra prize from Zach. Yeah, absolutely. We are going to see the boss's orders, though, on that Reggie Drago here. And this is smart from Tiger, playing around the gift energy, sending the Reggie Alecki to the bench so that Zach doesn't get to fill the hand with a bunch of cards and KOs the Reggie Drago, which is the other way Zach is able to draw cards. Wow, yeah, that is definitely huge. Zach now working even more off the back foot here, just not able to find the cards yeah. needed. And I don't think Zach oh. is going to be able to get an attack off. He's going to concede this game. Yeah. And Tiger Hickman wins a game one in a wow. matchup that is pretty unfavored. Because you do have so many items. Um, being able to utilize those is huge, so hopefully we'll see some extra luck here for Zach on the Pokestop as well. Ooh, a Regirock in the prizes could be a little awkward. Zach, of course, yeah. is playing two copies of the card. It is the most important card for this matchup, though. Yeah, just one Hisuian Heavy Ball right. as well. So going to have to be able to find that to secure that Regirock from the prizes if it's going to be used earlier on. So... 
Reggie Drago in the active, and now we Reggie Drago hitting the discard pile with that quick ball. Of course, as we saw in the last match, you know, Zach does play the ordinary rod, so it's it's not the worst to have to retrieve it back out and be able to search it later on. Then we're going to see an Ultra Ball here. Yeah, Ultra Ball's got to discard two cards. I think Zach just ditched one, so we need to make sure Zach discards one more card there off that Ultra Ball, because I do believe it was just that, that Aurora hitting the discard, right? Yeah, maybe thinking of the opposite. When an Aurora is attached, you discard one sort of thing, maybe just confusing the two. So we need one more card there. Uh, from Zach on the discard, but we are going to see that Reggie uh, be searched out from Zach and hit the bench as well. Okay, so yeah, I think they are. I think they're tracking now what we were just talking about. Yeah, he Chef. quick balled away the Reggie Drago and then ultra balled away one card, right? Uh, I believe so. So yeah, he's got to discard something else, I think, unless there's something we're missing here. Yeah, I'm a little confused here. I think Zach is thinking he had another card that he discarded, but... Yeah, potentially, potentially. I mean, he's got a twin energy in his discard pile. That's an easy choice. And yeah. He was already searching the deck with Quick Ball, so this should just be a pretty easy resolve, I would imagine. But definitely, uh, you know, something we got to keep track of. So good looks there, getting that taken care of. And looks like we are all good now. Game is going to continue on. Yeah, definitely. I'm so glad we caught that uh, fix so that we could get it situated before and honestly, anything could sit here. And honestly, it's advantageous for Zach here to discard more cards so yeah, he can draw true. a little bit more with <laughs> Dragon Sword. That is and true. also and get an energy. energy. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure Zach wants that extra energy in the discard Most pile. Most definitely, yeah. Uh, especially, you know, I'm sure you can see uh, with the timer ticking down, both of these yes. players are trying to secure uh, the wins here. And with 22 minutes left, Zach is going to try to bring it to a game three in order to take the W in this game. So, of course, pace of play is definitely going to be faster here. Yeah. Uh, Pokey stop being put into play for Zach, and it is going to be utilized here. So, any item cards are able to be kept. That is great for Zach Absolutely. here. His Suian. Uh, heavy ball being very essential, as we talked about before. Of course, that Reggie Rock is in the prize card, so that's going to be an easy grab here for Zach to trade with that Hisuian heavy ball. And, of course, the speed energy going to the discard and the Ordinary Rod going into hand is also very relevant uh, for Zach as well. So definitely a much better start from the last game that we saw. So much better. This is definitely a great spot for Zach Lesage. We could even see a turn to attack potentially depending on what else he's able to do. I do think there's a couple supporters in hand, so it's going to be a much quicker start for Zach than what we saw in game number one. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. All right, so we are now passed over to Tiger on the opposite side here, trekking shoes, uh, discarding a choice spell into another trekking shoes, and then into a Charon's Care, which is not something that's going to be relevant, at least for the first turn. But it's something that Tiger doesn't really want to discard. But looking at this hand, Pretty much his only option is to play research here. I could go oh, for the Pokestop, wow. which he will do now. Okay. One, two, three, three items. Three items, okay. Tiger says, thank you so much, Zach, for, for getting that Pokestop yeah. out there for me. <laughs> Works out pretty nicely. But those aren't really items that are relevant at this point either, right. Chip. Well, well, what Tiger could do here is use the Evolution Incense, go fetch yes. the Gengar out of the deck, and then go for the research. I do think <laughs> yeah. there is a research in hand. Tiger might be a little wary of playing the research. I do think it's a pretty sizable hand, and there's definitely some solid resources in that hand. But you kind of just want to get through the deck. You need to get yeah. some Pokemon into play. You need to try to set up a little bit, especially when Zack is threatening a potential turn two attack with yeah. Regirock. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure now seeing that the... Uh the Gengar is on the price cards is definitely yes. huge here for Tiger as yes. well. So that is definitely a thing to note for sure. But yeah, Chip, you're completely right. And I mean, that's how this deck really functions as well. You are going uh, through your deck pretty quickly and just getting everything you need in the earlier turns, getting all that damage down hopefully as well. So that, uh, that might be something Tiger's not too um, worried about. But we are going to see that Gape Jaw Bog hit the board here between these players and, and then yeah be that research that research there we go so researching that hand away discarding all those cards into a fresh seven cards hopefully more to work with here for tiger and a oh, ton yeah. of basic pokemon here it looks like and, and a, a gape quick jaw. ball i think so having the gape jaw in play is able to 
get that damage already set up. This is much better start for Tiger. Both of these players in this game having a way better play, way better start than they did in the first one. Well, it's always great to see um, our players have kind of equal starts as well, because then it's you know more of an interesting game instead of just knowing that one player is in a really tough spot. Pretty good combo there from Tiger. Uses Primate Wisdom to put the Gengar on top of the deck and then uses Trekking Shoes to immediately discard it. Woo! Sequencing on par here for Tiger. I'm sure Tiger has many games with this deck, opting to bring it to a regional. Or, I mean, who knows? Maybe it's just a super skilled player here in uh, playing to all of his outs as well. So Quick Ball discarding a Gape Job Bog, uh, hitting that discard pile in, and then being able to search out a basic Pokemon from the deck here for Tiger as well. Eyeing up that Crobat. Yeah, Gape Job Bog is an incredibly important card for this deck just to get it early at least. Once you've benched a bunch of Pokemon, you've already got a ton of damage in play. It's really not as impactful, especially now in this game since Tiger will have access to the couple copies of Gengar that are in the discard pile. So not really a bad thing to lose here. It could be nice yeah, to be yeah. able to bump Zach's Pokestops to disrupt him a little bit potentially. Crobat here will draw three cards though. Yeah, that's definitely. Oh, actually a fourth oh. card it looks like. Yeah, fourth card. Oh, I think the air balloon was played, maybe? Oh, no, that may have been oh, down already. Oh, I think Tiger drew one too many cards there off that oh, crowbat. Really? Yeah. Oh, no, okay. We'll have to get that checked out for sure. Yeah, um, I think they're realizing. It was that card on the end, but drawing an extra card is not good and not what you want to see happen here. But, yeah, that was definitely a seventh card drawn. You called that chip. You saw it. You saw correctly this time. I <laughs> did, yes. <laughs> that is for sure. So we might have to see some correction there from our judges. Yeah, it looks like our judge has caught it pretty quickly and yeah. is trying to resolve the situation. Most likely what's going to happen is that that card will be put on top. I believe the deck will be shuffled now. Yeah, and the judge is going yeah, to shuffle, shuffle it. it. And it will likely be a prize penalty. At regional championships, whenever you draw an extra card, it is a, a penalty that gets awarded to you, uh, so Tiger will likely receive a two prize penalty. We'll get confirmation of that for sure, but that means Zach will have to take two less prize cards in order to win this game. Yeah, potentially for sure. You know, everybody makes mistakes though. So definitely. That is definitely something we're, um, we see pretty often here, but okay, so Tiger now benching that Hisuian Zorark V, taking that 20 damage there off of the Gape Jaw Bog. And then we are going back into the deck, I believe, off of a quick ball. Yep, searching out a Diancy. We haven't seen that yet, Jeff. Yeah, this is a really cool card. You'll be able to use the Void Return of Hisuian Zoark V and just retreat into the Diancy, who has that Princess's Curtain ability. As long as it's active, your opponent can't play cards like Boss's Orders yeah. to bring up Pokemon on your bench. So a really cool play. Tiger can just hit for free, run into this Diancy, and now Zach won't be able to play something like Boss, bring it up, and knock it out with Regirock, potentially. Yeah, definitely. It buys you some time to be able to not take any more damage where you don't want it to be. You know, Diancy is something you can sacrifice for one prize card, but at least you're protecting what is your main attackers on the bench there as well. And we did get confirmation of that double prize penalty as well, as you can see on the board state here. Yeah. That's why Zach has two of those uh, red Pokeballs up there. Able to thin the hand out pretty nicely. I expect a Dragon's Horde coming in. And also the fact that Zach did discard two supporters from that Ultra Ball means he is probably sitting on a final supporter as this last card in hand. He's definitely going to be feeling pretty good trying to get through the deck, try to pull off an attack. And now that Zach has received this two prize penalty, you know, Tiger, the yeah. one receiving the penalty, I guess I should say, now that this is the case, it's much easier for Zach to map out his prize map. He, he needs to knock out this Deancey, knock out a Zoark, and then he can knock out any other one Pokemon in order to close out the game. Yeah, and there's options here. Of course, that Oranguru and what could soon be a Bibarel as well being uh, kind of a liability now for Tiger, unfortunately. So Zach, I'm sure, is going to capitalize on everything possible to get secure those last four prize cards, or I guess technically first four prize cards needed. Yes. But we are going to see uh, those energies accelerated onto our Reggie Drago here in the active. It looks like it will be a giant fangs. We'll deal 160 damage, more than enough to KO the Deancey. Zach going down to just five prizes remaining, but only needs to take three of them to win this match. This game, excuse me. 
All right, so Tiger over here now attaching an energy and then going to Marnie, but zero cards in hand here for Tiger, so no need to shuffle an invisible hand and put it at the <laughs> bottom of the deck. Yep. Just draw into five cards. Zach drawing into four cards, of course, because Tiger initiated that Marnie. And he does have another Zoark or yep. hits the, the Zoark's V Star. Very good. And has the Sharon's Care in hand. So if Zach was somehow uh, unable to attack with the Regirock, that is an option. But with the Aurora energies now in the discard pile, all Zach really needs is a Quick Ball or an Ultra Ball or a Capture Energy or a Reggie Drago. There are so many ways that Zach can pull off an attack this turn. Yeah, most definitely. This is a much better position for Zach to be in. So probably feeling a lot more comfortable with this board state than the last uh, game that we saw here for Zach. So we are going to see that Pokesop hits the board state, bumping that Gape Jaw bug out of there. And then we are going to see the Marnie being initiated here on Zach's side this time. So both players shuffling their hands that they just got from that other Marnie, putting it to the bottom. And Zach's going to draw five cards, Tiger drawing four. Zach looking for the Reggie Drago here. Does hit the quick ball, so that is a way to put it into play. Of course, Reggie Gigas' Ancient Wisdom requires you to have all six Reggies in play in order to get those three energies back from the discard pile. Yeah. And we will finally see in game two the very first Giga impact of this entire yeah. match <laughs> so far. And Zach will take two prizes here this turn. Yeah, I can't use a chair and scare when you are knocked <laughs> out, unfortunately. <Yeah. laughs> so that is definitely what we said Zach needed to see here. And I'm wondering at this point, Chip, of course, there's still a lot of game to be played here between these players, but uh, the, the clock is ticking down here. It and definitely so is. If this goes into a game three, you know, these players could be in a sticky situation depending on how quickly that goes. Definitely. And Tiger's going to play this one out, though. Wants yeah. to just maybe see what happens a little bit. Also, I mean, like we mentioned, this is a bad matchup for Tiger. So I think if he walked away with a tie here, he would be pretty content with that, though. Most definitely. I think Zach is definitely going to be trying to play pretty quickly to ensure <laughs> that does not happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we are going to see that ability attaching those three energy cards, that ancient wisdom. You need a lot of knowledge from these Reggies to initiate the ancient wisdom here. And Zach <laughs> Burns the canceling cologne can just play that. Zoark has an yeah. ability, but though it will not be active during Zach's turn, which of course has no impact, it is just a card that is a tech for another matchup. So any chance Zach has to play it, get it out of his hand, get it out of his deck, he won't have to worry about drawing into it at any point from Absolutely. here on out. Absolutely. So now taking that knockout on that Hisuian Zorark V-Star for Zach going down another two prize cards here. Tiger uh, activating, or sorry, not activating, um, promoting this little Bidoof into the active position. And now just deciding what to do here. Of course, that air balloon, air balloon hitting that Bidoof. So uh, giving Tiger the option to just retreat it into another Pokemon here for the turn. And then just deciding what else to do with this hand. Looks like it is going to be an Ultra Ball discarding the other two cards in hand. It was a Quick Ball and a Hisuian Zorark V searching out any Pokemon. That Beeborel is going to be a great option oh, yeah. here for Tiger being able to. And there's zero cards in hand. Wow, we've been seeing this from Tiger like all game. Yeah, you can uh, see how Tiger's deck is just really built with a bunch of these item cards that let you thin your hand down. And there's plenty of ways for him to play it in, in a manner that will allow him to just fill the hand all the way up to five. And of course, yeah. we still have not even seen that V-Star power Phantom Star yet this game. That's true. That is very true. But max utilization of all of these cards and abilities here from Tiger. We are going to see another Hisuian Zorark V, and this one is going to go to the bench instead of the discard pile with a double turbo energy attached as well. And that's all you need yep. for Hisuian Zorark is just a double turbo uh, energy. So, And that's part of why players have thought that this card would be so powerful is you can just slap one energy. You don't have to worry about, you know, using Melanie or using your Star Portal V-Star power or using Trinity Nova as ways to get extra energy cards in play. You just have to attach one single energy card every single turn and you can attack throughout the rest of the game. Absolutely. And even if it, you know, hinders your uh, hitting ability, I guess, the damage output that you do, you still get to kind of choose um, how how much damage you do with the damage counters that you place. So yep. it kind of plays in well with each other for sure. Tiger now, just a couple cards in hand. We'll play the quick ball, burning that out. 
can go get any car, any Pokemon from the deck, put it into hand. Any basic Pokemon. Right, any basic, and does choose to leave that Radiant Halucha in the deck, obviously not super useful, and can use the Phantom Star. V-Star power, we'll see seven new cards. Yeah, normally discarding your hand, but again from Tiger, no no hand to be discarded there. Just an empty hand, so just drawing into seven cards, uh, pretty much like uh, like a research, but with no discard as well. So that air balloon is on the Bibarel, so we are able to see a retreat, uh, subtracting those two colorless retreat costs. Yep. So retreat for free, pretty much into that Hisuian Zorark V Star. Primate Wisdom does find the damage pumps. We could see some damage moved around. Could take both of the counters off the active. We'll just move one, though, and just spread it over to the bench to Serene Zorg V. I'm sure this is still a relatively scary position here for Tiger to be in. Of course, we do have that Hisuian Zorark V on the bench still, so it can turn into a V-Star next turn. But Zach's deck is literally built to uh, retrieve these Pokemon in any way possible and be yeah. able to just hit again. But will we see the recovery here and, from Zach? And I think with this top deck from Zach, he should have it as long as that second Regirock is in the deck, which it is. Able to find the Capture Energy, brings down the Regirock. He's got Scoop Up Net in hand, so he can utilize Ancient Wisdom after sending up the Regirock, which will take the KO on this active Azuian Zork. V-Star, thanks to the prize penalty, Zach wins game number two. Wow. Both of these players playing to all of their outs in this matchup here, and we are going into a game three at Champ Crobat. <laughs> it's not the one you want to start, that <laughs> is for sure. <laughs> it was no. indeed Crobat V in the active spot. Tiger now laying out the prize oh, wow. cards. A bunch of Pokemon so far. Oh, wow. Okay. The Lots Gengar, of not great. A couple basics as well. Doesn't have that one Deancey anymore, which he utilized, of course, in the first game. Yeah, I feel like that Deancey actually uh, came in pretty pretty clutch here for Tiger in the last game because, you know, you're forcing your opponent to just take one prize card, and then you just kind of stall out a bit, right. and you're able to retreat out pretty much of uh, of your Hisuian Zorark as well. So not having that because there's only one copy in deck is definitely something to be aware of. All right, so we are starting over on Tiger's side here, opting to go first. Of course, starting with that Crobat V, not something you want to do because you want to be able to utilize that dark asset ability um, to your advantage, but it has to be played from hand. So starting in doesn't help you at all. It just becomes a liability, unfortunately, for Tiger. And so this would be a great hand if Tiger had access to the Crobat. There's an Ultra Ball. He'd be able to thin it true. all the way out. Oh, and he's thinking about going in. There's only one Crobat in here, yeah, right? There's yeah, there's one Crobat. There's one Crobat. So it is already... Okay. So he thought about going in with the Ultra Ball and then I think realized, yeah, no. better not. I started my Crobat, so... <laughs> Yeah, that is uh, definitely important here for Tiger to pay attention to. So, okay, as we have seen before, that Reggie Rock on the screen is going to be super essential to this matchup here for Zach, utilizing the Reggie Rock to just prey on that weakness that the Hisuian Zorark V and V Star has to fighting. So we are over on Zach's side, three. Of the three of the six Reggies out at this point in time. Not yeah. sure. I didn't see the hands, but of course there were a couple extra cards drawn. Yes. Uh, because of those mulligans for Zach. Looks like he's got a couple supporters to work with, so plenty of options, things to try and make happen here. Zach, I think, would love to find the pieces to get a turn one knockout. It's a lot to ask for, but it is entirely possible if he can get. Two Aurora Energies in the discard pile, which, of course, he's already got the one Speed Lightning down. And if he can get this Regirock into the active spot, which he can do through something like the scoop yeah. up that he plays now, he'll be able to get a turn one knockout. Of course, Crobat is weak to fighting, so a very easy target for the Regirock to take down. And Zach is flying here, discarding the hand with Professor's Research, looking for just, if he can just find two more Pokemon and the Aurora Energy, he could get this knockout. Yeah, the suspense is wild right now, Chip, oh. because this is so crucial. What was drawn into? I see the two Pokemon, but I don't see, see the them? Aurora Energy. Oh no, not, not the Aurora Energy again. coming back again to haunt Zach here. Of course, those damage counters being placed from the Gape Job Bog, if anybody is confused by all of these uh, two damage counters being placed on all these Pokemon. Every single one of them has it now. Yes. So Zach will accelerate a couple energies into play to the Reggie Drago. So close so to the close. turn one KO. Not able to do it though, just has to pass it back over to Tiger. 
back here on Tiger's side now. So here we go. That Gengar being retrieved from the discard pile with that ability and then taking those damage counters as well. And a damage pump is going to move them around, taking one damage counter off of the Gengar, moving it to the active Crobat. And Ultra Ball will just grab out the Hisuian Zoark V-Star. We're going to be seeing a Phantom Star to dump the zero card hand that Tiger has. Again! And <laughs> fill it up to seven. Yeah, definitely huge here. Tiger has nailed this effect of just dwindling down the hand to zero and then just drawing cards either off of the V-Star power or off of that Bibarel as well. Just playing this deck very well, showcasing exactly how it works here for all of our viewers who've never seen it before, at least on our yep. stream. Yep, the first time you could have seen the Hisuian Zuark V-Star on an official stream because, I mean, hey, the first tournament here. So we've gotten to feature so many of the new cards, which is what I love about these early regionals. We see the Zoark, we've seen the Giratina. Maybe we'll get a Gudra on later on, Shelby. What do you that think? That would be great. <laughs> Gudra is fantastic. So here we go. Air Balloon coming down onto that Crobat, so at least allowing it to retreat out of that vulnerable position in the active there. And you are able to hopefully get into your attacker as well from that retreat. And then we are going to see the Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball like, discard, yep. yeah. And just two, choosing two cards there, the Research and that Damage Pump being discarded to the Ultra Ball to search out any Pokemon from the deck here on Tiger's side. What do you think Tiger's going for here, at least, Chip? Could grab out the Bidoof, try to establish a Bibarel. Also, a second Hisuian Zoark V seems pretty solid. Really like to get both of them in play this turn. Tiger yeah. also has not played a supporter card, so maybe taking count of which one he's got more of and which one he's more likely to draw into on the other end of the supporter for turn. So looks like Zoark V, v is going to be the choice. And actually does have a Quick Ball in hand as well. Oh, nice. Might not want to discard the Hisuian Zoark V-Star in hand, though. So does just go with a Marnie. Both players will shuffle the hands and put them on the bottom. Yeah, and I think that is definitely uh, essential as to what you were talking about, Chip. Getting that Bidoof down and the Zorark V is very important because they're very important to the stack. You need an alternate attacker if yours goes down, but also you need that draw support engine set up as well. So. Oh, uh, uh, and this is a little awkward here. Zach <laughs> picked up his deck, but one card got left behind uh, when he started to put the a deck on top of his they hand for the Marnie. I don't know if he put oh, the no. deck on top before he realized the bottom card was there, but yeah, I mean, it is important that the, the order be correct here. Oh, no, so they don't know which card it was. I think he had was? five cards in hand. Yeah, they've, I think, just confirmed. So it was oh, just one see, card. Okay. Yeah, and now, now we're, we're good. Okay, A little bit of a weird that. thing there, yeah. <laughs> Anything can pop up in these matches, though. I'm For glad sure. we got that result here. So Tiger... Um, having initiated that Marnie, able to draw into five cards there, not those four. So those uh, five cards, we saw a Choice Belt. I think we saw a Charon's Care well, in there. No Bidoof, though. That is yeah, probably the there one was, or other way to thing. Search it. Right. One other thing Tiger would have liked to get. We'll take this KO. Just a minute left in oh, this goodness. game. And what Zach, I mean, this is tough. What Zach really needs to do is he needs to try to take a knockout this turn before time expires. If Zach is yep. turn zero, that means this game is going to end in a tie. But if he can end his turn, do an attack, take two prizes, and then get it back over to Tiger really fast before the time expires, then Tiger would be turn zero, which means Zach would have turn one and turn three of time. So theoretically, enough time to still win this game. But if he doesn't close out his attack in the next 30 seconds, Ooh. it's not going to go down like that. Oh, the suspense. It's killing me, Chip. This is definitely uh, oh, what you have to take note of. And I don't think there's a, a timer yeah, there. Yeah, Zach doesn't know exactly yeah. how much time is left. But he's definitely got a sense that there's not much. So Yeah, 15 seconds yeah, now. I, I don't think we're going to be seeing enough. Uh, there's just so much for Zach still yeah, to do on the seconds. turn. And he draws into absolutely nothing oh, on no. the Dragon's Horde, by the way. That is really not good. Yeah, just not a great hand here. Only that scoop up net, having to discard, uh, well, just the energies there off of that Reggie Drago and then just yeah. hitting the bench again, taking those two damage counters. But yeah, we have hit time now for these players as long as our, uh, yeah. I think our timer matched. Yes. Yeah, so that is time for our players here. So Zach will be turn zero. Tiger will be turn one and turn three. Zach will also have turn two of time. And we'll just actually see a Static Shock dealing 
50 damage to the active thanks to the choice belt. And yeah, this one's going to close out in a, the, a tie, Shelby. The first tie we've had on the stream today. Yeah, definitely not what you want to see. Uh if you're in this position yeah. for Zach. And but the yeah. players recognize the situation here. Exactly. Extend the hand, say, there's no way either of us can win this. Let's just tie it up and move on to our next round. You know, and you can always question, oh, well, maybe other things.